Bigger Better Biz community, where I equip you with the tools and know-how to grow that bigger, better, small business. I'm here today with Tracy Hansen from NGGE. Tracy, how are you? I'm well. Thank you, Brian. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. And we just realized we, you used to live in New Hampshire. I live in New Hampshire. And you even have a friend in my hometown. So small world, huh? Very, very small world. Yes. Uh-huh. So I'd love to know well, a little bit person. more. Exactly. Exactly. When things are all better and we're feeling good, I definitely would love that. I want to have events and have that energy in the room. I miss it so much. Webinars just don't do it anymore. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about NGGE? NGGE stands for Next Generation Global Education. And I began it back in uh, 2012. Uh, when um, open resources were becoming more and more and more, so many of them out there, but people didn't know how to use them or what to do with them. Um, NGGE was to help uh, educators and learners to better understand how they can plan and build their own academic pathway um, using uh, resources um, that, are, that are out there and available. From that, I ended up uh, um, writing a book in 2015 after I traveled a little bit called The Matrix of a Learner, A Philosophy for Life. Um, and that is just uh, a different way to look at the purpose of education, um, mm -hmm. what, what uh, education and school maybe should be thinking about and looking at rather than what they are looking at and how they're doing it. Uh, because education around the world is focused on tests, but not on the ability to do anything. And when I started to travel in 2015, uh, after, after that, um, I got locked down as everybody did with COVID. And I began to uh, try and find a way to be able to still engage learners uh, by reading stories, reading simple stories online. And from that, we developed uh, a program called the Global Readers Matrix, uh, the, yeah. <clears throat> Global Matrix Readers Theater. Mm -hmm. And that's what you see behind me. And that's really what it is that we're trying to promote. It uses the philosophy of the matrix as a means to be able to facilitate uh, people in the learning and reading of scripts that we've developed specifically that will enhance uh, learning so that it's, it's color-coded, it's uh, linked to um, vocabulary, it's linked to all sorts of references, and it also flips the classroom by putting in before the reading, a, um, an introduction, which introduces different types of academic areas that the uh, learners can explore from the script. Okay. It, uh, it's kind of, uh, it's called, it's a very good version of authentic um, aesthetic education, mm -hmm. which incorporates uh, being able to learn curriculum across the board through the arts. And in our case, it's through literature. So we can take stories that are already out there or stories that uh, we wanna tell. Uh, we can take a science or social studies and script it in a way that it becomes interactive. And the, the uh, group becomes more involved and interested because they aren't just reading it from a textbook, but they're actually interactively reading it together. And then we have the ability to afterwards uh, talk more about it. We are global. So when we do get together, we have people from around the world who come to read and share their ideas, which is nice because uh, obviously we know that our learning and our education is very much from our background and the experiences that we have from um, mm -hmm. our childhood and our upbringing. So when you're talking to people from other places in the world and being able to collaboratively hear and listen to how things are and how it's affecting each of us, and we can, we can collaborate more 
and look at how we can solve or talk about those problems in um, a way that is non-confrontational, which is and really important. It's funny because I've really delved in with a lot of our clients because we have the marketing agency and telling their stories. Uh, and and how pervasive stories are. I mean, we just did a webinar for Constant Contact and we were talking about the power of story and basically how these holidays are all based around stories. It's, you know, the ritual. So I love that. I, uh, I'm i a huge believer in that. And actually I did something very similar in high school. Instead of standard math, I participated in something called IMP, uh, which was basically storytelling so that you were learning math in a story type of format very similar to what you're doing. I can tell you, it, it really helped me to grasp those oh, concepts. So yes. very cool. It's exciting. Yeah, so if you've got any of those stories, ship them over to me and we'll script them. I, I don't even think I have the books anymore. I think I donated them, <laughs> but, oh. but uh, let me see if I can find that resource for you because I, my teacher, Mrs. Fendler, she was amazing. And I remember getting that A plus because I just loved the idea of the story mixing with the math. So very cool. Yeah. So let's, Thank you for sharing that. I want to ask you one follow-up question where you are really highlighting the importance of stories. Um, when you've traveled and you've gone to some amazing places, some developing countries where, you know, I was just in the Cape Verde Islands. Story is huge there. It's, it's not, you don't have a last name. It's, you know, my father-in-law is Manuel de Linda de Aldea. And, yeah. oh, I know Linda de Aldea. Oh, here's a story about her. And it was amazing how you could just see this social capital built around stories. For you, I know you have the YouTube channel. <laughs> on I'm your website, I know that you have the YouTube channel that, uh, that we're going to take a quick peek at. But on your website, do you have, or is there anywhere where you can direct me when we look? that's showing some of those stories that you've captured, some of the inspiration that has been the impetus for creating NGGE? Uh, not necessarily for that, but yes, you can find um, some of the stories. If you're a facilitator, then you have access to the library of uh, stories that we're building. Um, Love it. But um, on the front of it, there are three that I put up for people to be able to get an idea of what we're talking about. One is a simple story, if you give a pig a pancake. Okay, now a lot of people in here know it, not necessarily in the other countries, but it's really cool because uh, it's so simple, but it can delve into um, the customs of pancakes around the world. Okay, so we look at uh, are all pancakes the same, well, they certainly aren't. There's different pancakes coming out of different cultures. So you can have a cultural pancake share day. Um, many of them don't know how maple syrup or the science of uh, maple syrup is and, and the process, but they do know of rubber. So we talk about uh, how maple syrup is made and the science of that. And then we can associate that back to their experiences to share with how they um, um, harvest rubber, that type of that thing. That is cool. That uh, is very second, cool. Yeah, the second one, which we actually just did an open session on in the last week, is called the Lily Root, um, and that was from a story that I found um, on indigenous species out of Canada, and I turned that into a script um, because I thought it was important. Certainly, in my travels, I know that. Um, their environment and what's in their environment, they use a lot for healing qualities and for municipal purposes. And this sort of brought that to light. And the third one was one that I wrote entirely um, on my own without any background. And that was on Fred Rogers, who um, I did that for um, a good neighbor uh, day. And uh, of course in America, he was always known as America's favorite neighbor. So I wrote a story about him and his life. So every, everything, it depends. Uh, it's just a matter of being able to get out there and try it. We work with people and share with them how we do the scripts. Um, I even have a, a couple of people in science and math who don't understand how scripts could lead to learning. 
And so I shared with him one that I had done a long time ago, written um, on the heart with 10 characters, different uh, parts of the heart became characters and they all spoke about what they were doing and what their importance was to the heart. So it's really, I, I, it's really unlimited what you can do. It's true. And very true. Uh, we so, had, we had, we had somebody from India do a script last year um, about uh, COVID and Santa and the fact that Santa is in in the uh, at risk age range of wow. COVID and should not be traveling to everybody's home on Christmas Eve. And what are we going to do to be able to save Santa so that he's safe, but we can still have a Christmas? You know, so as I say, anything can be scripted. So true. Now you'd mentioned facilitators, and we only we only have 14 minutes, so I want to get to some of your marketing stuff. I love your stories though, but my question is. Who are we selling to? So who's the end user? Um, educators. Educators. And educators, when... primarily educators, but in the okay. matrix, we also talk about educators uh, as not just teachers, but people okay. who have knowledge that they want to share to be able to share with other people. So um, the learners, the students are also part of the, of the process. But right now we're focusing on uh, educators around the world to take a risk and do something differently. And is this, is it a nonprofit or is the business model that they become a facilitator, they buy into the matrix framework, they have access to your resources and they're paying uh, an annual subscription or something like that to have that ability? We tried to do that. Uh, my score person worked with us for a long time to try and, and come up with an idea of how we could do that. But because you're working in such a broad and diverse area where some would end up paying uh, the equivalent to maybe two or three cents in US money and, and okay, it, it wasn't gonna work. I understand. And if, if we wanted, um, if we want the educators to use them and embed this into their curriculum, then we're asking them to take it into the schools and use it and paying for it wouldn't work either. So at this point, it's uh, completely not for profit and we don't make a profit. We don't charge right. anything. I don't charge for my training. I don't charge for the work that I'm doing. There's no charge to becoming a member or becoming a facilitator. And just so it's really just, that. it's a labor of love. It's a passion project for you. And I respect yeah. that. Um, so if we're talking about educators in whatever form, whether they're formally certified educators, teachers, or if they're homeschool teachers, uh, parents that are doing virtual school, then the thing that we really are trying to do is hit them and tell them why this is either a great supplement to what they're doing or complementary to some of the the different syllabus syllabus or syllabi that they receive that is that how you an enrichment yeah yes yeah. it, it, okay. it enriches and enriches and supplements the curriculum it's not to su supplant the curriculum okay. that's not what we're trying to do what we're trying to do is to say Enhance it. Kids aren't, learn kids aren't learning the curriculum the way we're delivering it. How can we do it in a, a more interactive, uh, fun, engaging way so that uh, they're more involved in what they're learning, they'll remember it more, they're more excited about it, and they'll be able to use it. Uh, they'll be able to use it more. So uh, where we have limited time, I'm going to go down, I'm recording this for you. And for the folks watching at home, I mean, what we've covered is really how important story is and how you've realized that applying any type of concept to a script or a story is going to help retention. It's going to help people to pass it on and pass it forward, just like how we remember songs better than we would someone reading at us. So the, the question, I guess, um, when we're looking at this, you know, you let, let me share the screen so that everybody can see on the... NGGE page. And for all of you watching, you can go to NGGE.org. We'll have that in the description as well. You know, I have I know that you have the process. So you're showing kind of the life cycle. Uh, 
And then you have the problems with current education paradigm. So I guess my question is this, where story is so pervasive, have you considered using story and showcasing a few different videos on the home screen so that my wife, who's upstairs teaching virtual school to my daughter in first grade, could come on and easily pl press play and realize, oh, this is something I could use for Olivia. You know, so instead of making them read, have you thought about adding videos that maybe tell about, hey, everybody has a different pancake. Just use that as an example. Here's where we're trying to make it so that we create a central hitching post where everybody can tell the story in their own cultural, you know, kind of aesthetic. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, well, part of the problem with taking our videos is that they're pretty long. Um, I'm not a video editor and we do get into conversations about all kinds of things in an open session. There's uh, two different types of, of learning. The open session, which is just that. I announce on our Yeah, our I'm website. not talking about open session. So I'm talking about a quick video that basically spells this out really quick. It doesn't have to be a long video. Hey, here are the three problems with current education paradigm. Here's how we're fixing it. And then what I would want to see is a call to action, become a facilitator, join a future meeting or class or whatever you call it, uh, preview our resources. There are three pieces to that website. NGGE is the first piece, okay? Mm -hmm. The second piece to that website is uh, the matrix of a learner. Now that has, that has a video on it and so does uh, Next Generation have a video not on the front page, it's on the drop down. Yeah. Okay. But, um, but here, so I'll, I'll bring in just as, as you understand the education portion, I understand the tech portion. So we're relying on someone now you're actually expecting, if I bring it back to you and use a metaphor, they're on page one, you're expecting them to jump to page 22 to find what you need them to find. Right. So you're making them hunt. And if anybody's hunting, if we're talking about an educator who has limited time, thankless job that's trying to find ways to complement their syllabus, or you're talking about my wife, who is a virtual educator with my daughter, she's not going to be clicking around to all those different pages and stats show that. So what I'm proposing is don't hide it and bury it, put something on the front page that really tells them, instead of just this graphic, tells them what it's all about so that they can get involved and give them a way to get involved instead of relying on them clicking on one of these tabs. Okay. So it's just, just a recommendation. Quite, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not quite sure uh, what to put up there. I understand what you're saying, but I'm yeah. not sure um, what that would look like. I would say it's a video of, of how you started traveling in 2015 and just try to keep it really short and sweet because you don't have a lot of attention span with people um, no, really can't. quick. Now, here's, here's how we started. Here are the three issues we've uncovered, and here's how we're resolving it. Very basic, you know, pain point. Here's what we're doing, resolution. And then the big thing is, you know, there's no clear call to action for me. So anybody that's in a rush, I need to know that I can do something on this site. Right now, yeah, we have the navigation menu at the top, but people expect if they're going to load this on their page, if they come to find it somehow, that they can click and take another action, make a micro commitment towards your brand or organization. We're not giving them that ability. Even with the image right here, you could hyperlink that because I'm sure a lot of people have come. I'm clicking on it right now. Just like when you press on the elevator button, hoping the door closes before that person runs in. Same thing, and it's not bringing me anywhere. Frustration, I'm going somewhere else where I can find ready resources, and maybe I'll look at this later. Okay. It makes sense. Um, yeah. But it isn't NGGE that we're trying to sell. It's the uh, GMRT that we're trying to sell. That's sort of. And that's, and it's, it's lost on me when I come here. Um, because we have, I get it, it's the ecosystem. I get that we have the matrix of the learner and GMRT. I understand that after talking to you. When I first hit this page before we pressed record, I wouldn't have known that. So right away, you know, for me, 
if it's not a video, if that's, if you're not ready to do that, then maybe show me some resources that you've done or show me something where I get more information about GMRT and make that the, the figurehead of the page, the hero of the page, instead of showing me this where I'm like, okay, is it earth education? And is it a matrix? Uh, what am I doing? Because if you confuse them, you lose them. And you're not selling anything, but you won't even get them to commit to finding out more, signing up, becoming a facilitator, using your resources. Okay. And this All is right. where I would, I would open it up to, you know, your consortium, talk to your group and, and just say, what are we trying to get them to do when they come to this page? Do we want them to get more information? Like you have it when I load the page that it has the email sign up. But even the email sign up, if it loads, I don't know what I'm signing up for yet. So are, do we want to get them there? Is there like a resource that they can download to join our list so that now we're getting more facilitators and learners and storytellers in the mix? Are we trying to collect more stories? Do we want people to do that? So I want to look at the website like a Swiss army knife and figure out what different things do we want people to do and have that front and center for them. Mm. Mm, okay almost like bringing it back to literary choose your own adventure you know turn to page 24 if you turn left 26 if you turn right same thing give them a few options and let them choose so that they can start getting a little bit more familiar and intimate with what you're doing all right all right um okay <laughs> I know it's and that's why I'm recording this. You can no, play it. I do you know, understand. No, I do understand. Yep. I do understand. I'm just not, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Um that's how fine. to go about that's about fine. Doing. That's no problem. Take take what I said. It'll be on YouTube later on. You can share it. We're gonna send you a link you can download as well, and you can share that with people. Um but I, I think the name of the game here is that you have attention spans dwining. You have so many stimuli for everybody that if we don't get to the point, then we lost them. And even, I mean, you're telling me about an abundance of free resources, but I don't even know that I have access to free resources by reading this. So put, put yourself in the shoes of the mom teaching or the dad teaching or the aunt or grandmother or whoever, the, the teacher that has no time and is underpaid. How do we get them to take action right away when they hit the site? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'd, okay. I'd say that's one. Um, what I'll do is I'll jump. We have a few minutes and I wanted to look at YouTube to make sure you're getting the most out of it. And I do see here you have your social links, which is great. So I click over here and it brings me to the wrong what, one. It brings me to that's the Tracy the Hansen. One. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the wrong okay. one. Got that link to the wrong thing. So what is the, what is the corporate channel? Um, well, now I'm not quite sure how I get to that. Um, Let's see if you named it this. No, it's, no, it's named uh, Matrix uh, Learning Center. Uh, let's see. Matrix Learning Center. I don't have any way to be able to get to it because I can't. Uh, the Matrix Learning Center. Yeah, that's it. This is it? Yeah. Okay. So one, change it up so that we're going to the Matrix Learning Center. Um, two, this is actually, this is good. You've got, looks like quite a few videos, which is wonderful. I love this. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. You have tons of content on here. Um, so let's look at it again from the angle of someone that's coming in, right? If, I, if I'm on your homepage, this is basically how we're presenting the channel. It's like the old TV guides where they would tell you what's going on. So this actually, you have some customization. You have the ability to add different sections. So if there are people from certain parts of the world, if there are certain types of stories, uh, if if there are stories about certain subjects that people can learn from, math, science, so on, you can create different playlists for those videos. And it's as simple as when you're logged into your Google account or your YouTube account, which is your Google account, 
you can just click here on save, which it's not allowed. Oh, because it's made for kids. Okay. It's all marked as for kids. Understood. Is that not okay? No, no, no. That's fine because this will be, I'm assuming this is going to be shown to kids or is it for the educators that are training the kids? Well, in other words, kids, 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 kids are in, in some of them as well, but Okay. It's just that it's not restricted to just adults being able to listen to the reading and the discussion that it's, kids can do so as well. Okay, it, it's, it's up to you. Um, it's really there for the you know, Child Online Privacy Protection Act. It's more like that was created more for those families that are just making tons of videos of their kids and making millions of dollars so that oh. people, can't, people can't write inflammatory or really horrible things. In the comments, um, if you do go, you can turn it off. You can turn it off so that you just say it's not for kids. Because really, this mm -hmm. stuff, a kid could watch it, but now you're just denoting it's not going to show up on YouTube Kids because that's not the right platform for it to show oh, up on, oh, right? Oh. Okay, so, I, so why should you go back and fix that and just say? Not I would for turn kids. them all exactly. You can turn them all as not for kids. That way, you can add them to playlists, and if you do that. Now it's easily sortable, just like a collection of books. Like I've got my, you know, uh, rolled doll books and I've got my Harry Potters and all those same kind of thing. Now we can have those different sections, almost bookshelves where we're showing the different types of videos easier mm. for people to navigate. Okay. So that I can do. <laughs> yep. 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 And then, and the cool thing is you already have a couple, like you have outside the box, the reading channel, matrix learners. That's great. What you can do is you can go into your YouTube studio where you upload all the videos and there's a section called customization and you're able to add different sections. So you'll be able to add a section based off the outside the box playlist. And then what it would do is it would show me all the outside the box videos right along the top. And then another section, you can add 12 sections total. Okay. So that's just, it's just, you know, merchandising the channel a little bit better. Um, right, right. My recommendation too would be since we're, you know, you know, you, you have to, you have a very, um, effective concept, but it's also, once you get into it, it's a little bit more verbose to explain because there's so much that goes into it, how people learn everything else, but maybe you make just a, a few videos and have a challenge for yourself to make a few videos about, Hey, here's how it started. Here's issue one. Here's how we're doing, taking care of it. Here's issue two. Here's how we're taking care of it. You can make that a playlist and have that at the top so that people, you can say, start by watching here. And then they watch five videos that are a minute or a minute and a half each, now they totally understand what's going on and what they have to do. So that would really save you and kind of automate the whole process of getting people to join as a facilitator or a learner. Okay. And the other thing that I'll look at without, get well, two more things I want to make sure. So in your YouTube studio, you have the ability to add an about section. Your about section can include quite a bit of information. Uh, it can have a description right here. It can have links. So it could have a link to sign up as a facilitator if people are interested, things like that. That's going to help you get found too. So you wanna make sure you have a, a description for the channel, what we're all about, what we represent. Uh, have those links so that you're giving people kind of that, okay, I'm interested. Now, what do I do? That also, since YouTube is a search engine, it's building a profile for your channel so that if people are searching, you have a chance of being found. Because okay. people, people may not be looking for Matrix Learning Center, but if you talk about how kids are learning through story or even adults or any kind of learner is learning complex math, like statistics and stuff like that through story, People can get into that easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, and I'm going to show you two more things. I keep adding to myself, but that's okay. And then I'll make lunch for the kids. So yeah. here we've got all your videos. Is there a video 
that you see right here that you just want me to jump into just so that I can kind of take a look at how well optimized it is. What do you mean by how well optimized it is? You tell me the video and I'll show you what I mean. Um, we, uh, go to, Any? to yeah. yeah, the gingerbread huh? man. Okay. Okay, wonderful. So here's what I'm talking about. Ectab roll runs with the gingerbread man. Okay, great. So we're using, if, if anything, the keyword here is the gingerbread man. So if people are looking up stories about the gingerbread man, now we have a chance of showing up. Here's the thing. When you create a video, one thing that we want to do is be have what we call focal keywords. So the same thing as if it's a genre and we're talking about suspense, we're not going to add in you know, action thriller and all these things. It's a suspense book. So this video is about Gingerbread Man. We're staying focal on that. So Gingerbread Man, children's stories, fables, whatever it is, tall tales, whatever you're going to call them. But the thing that I want to see, this keyword right here, the Gingerbread Man, I want to see it down here too. So right now, there we go. Gingerbread Man is at the end. Uh, best practice for you when you're creating your videos, have the keyword that you're trying to focus on in the title, and in the first one or two sentences of your description as well, right at the top. So that if someone's looking for the gingerbread man, just as an example, now it's showing, hey, that's in the title and wow, it's in the description as well. They're gonna see probably these first two or three lines. Okay, I might actually click on it. I have, I have a reason to click and check it out. Okay. So I would do that with your different videos as well. Um, okay. And this, in this case, you know, we're talking about she's running with the gingerbread man, which is wonderful. I can even see the tags that you chose, which are keywords. And we're talking about learning, mental health, companionship, education, readers, theater, loneliness, GMRT, and COVID. So you can add more tags. A tag just is telling Google or YouTube, in this case, what the video is about. So that if someone types in that specific tag, like learning strategies or, you know, learning through reading or how, whatever other things you might use that, that people use in normal speak to describe what you do, you can add those in as keywords so that you increase your chances of showing up. Okay. Okay. All right. So part of the problem, so, part of the, the biggest problem with our videos is the length of the it, videos. It's debatable. Right. So your videos are going to be obviously your videos are longer, especially if people are telling stories, which is great. Um, one thing that I know you had mentioned when you applied for the blueprint session was like how to edit the videos. And I'm guessing you're using iMovie to edit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I which, don't know how to do it. I mean, I have to take bits you, and pieces off all the time. And, and you're what, what I would do is, and this is something we do. So a great example is this blueprint session. We're going to have the whole blueprint session that, that we edit and put up on YouTube so people can learn from, but I'm not relying on someone having 38, 40 minutes to, to sit there and watch. So we're also taking clips of that. So can you go in or do you have a volunteer or someone that can go in, take that video and now make little two minute clips of something that's really cool that you can also post up? And then you can say, hey, watch the full know, video I here. How to take, I don't know how to take the clips off of iMovie. There are, let me see. I'm going to see if I can find a tutorial for you. I think I actually Very have one easy. that I sent. It's actually pretty easy. Pretty okay. easy. In the editor, okay. you're basically just taking a little section of that video. And then you, you delete everything else. And then you just export the video and upload it to YouTube. So a really good way to get little bits and pieces, talk about, you know, this is how it relates to COVID or whatever else you're doing. And that way you now are using the same content over and over again, smaller videos with other keywords to get people in watching your content. Mm -hmm. The, okay. the last, yeah, the I've, last, oh, go ahead. No, I, I say I've, I've watched videos and stuff and I haven't figured it out yet. So I end up in, taking days to edit a video and I can't do it that way. No, I understand. I totally, understand. there's, um, the other thing you can do is look up fiverr.com. Have you heard of it? I've heard of it. 
So it's F I V E R R.com. It has two R's at the end, fiverr.com. Uh, there are people that can clip the videos for you on there. It starts, the tasks start at five bucks and they go up from there, but you might be able to find someone that could actually clip your videos for you and make a whole bunch of clips. You just want to tell them, you know, clip from two minutes and 37 seconds to four minutes and 11 seconds, and they'll do it for you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So there you go. The, the last thing I'm going to show you is this, and I think this is uh, something that a lot of people can really uh, learn from and, and probably it, it's a great way for people to get new ideas about videos they should be creating on YouTube. So one thing since YouTube's the second largest search engine, uh, just like with Google, it auto fills. So if I start, we'll, we'll use the gingerbread man. If I type in the gingerbread man, Google is showing or YouTube in this case is showing me what people are searching for. The gingerbread man story, the gingerbread man read aloud song, loose in the school, book, Shrek, movie. So we can see these different ones. This is giving me an idea of what people are searching for. And then I could do this. I could click on the gingerbread man story. Now it's going to show me all of the different versions. Of course, these are kids cartoon stuff, but it shows me how many views they've had for that 177 million. I can uh -huh. click in here. And I can go down and see, okay, what did they add in their description? Is there anything that maybe inspires me that's my muse to add to my description? Not copy and paste for those of you watching at home. Don't do it because this is a search engine. YouTube knows what's already been written. But hey, the story, okay. So could we add in for our video a little kind of synopsis of the story and how it goes? Um, notice here how they have links to their different channels, to Facebook. That's a best practice as well. You can add links. Just make sure they have HTTP in front of them. So now you can link back to your resources library. And Tracy, a really easy tip for this, open up like a Google Doc, a Word Doc, Notepad, anything on your computer. All you have to do is you can type this out one time. And every time you upload a new video, just copy and paste it in. Okay. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Saves you time. Right. Uh -huh. But- so, so what I do is I'll look and I'll see how can I emulate videos that are really successful. This is an animated fairy tale, the gingerbread man. That's why it has 177 million views. Will we reach that? Probably not with the nature of the topics and subject matter that we have in our videos, but we can gain some insights into what they're doing and how we could incorporate some of that so that when people are typing in the gingerbread man, maybe we show up too. And maybe it's my wife who's looking for a video or a story. And then she sees this, she's like, oh, you know what guys, this is a little bit different. Let's take a look at this. So we're just trying to broaden our horizons, get more people in. Okay. So really, really uh, the first thing is maybe just making videos of the, of the readings of the stories themselves and not necessarily of the discussion and so forth that followed. Yeah, as, as long as you know, they're in Creative Commons and you're not break, infringing on copyright, for sure. Okay. It's a great way to do it. Any kind of creative commons, if you can have people that are reading them, that's a, a wonderful thing. And that those are that's great content. Because then from there, you can say, hey, now we have a way that you can apply this story to learning about COVID or to learning about math or whatever else. Okay. Okay. All right. I gave you a lot. I, it's yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Yep. A, a compendium, if you will. But um, I think, you know, just if you make just a few tweaks, the, the website, yeah. just tell me what to do. If you don't do the video, fine. But if you can put up a few buttons and tell me, sign up as a facilitator, check out our resources, join our newsletter for new learning ideas. Good. Good. Then at least we're that, growing that, the that list. I have to go and talk to my my web designer about sure. <laughs> yeah it, and i i'll tell you it's it's very very simple to add it's three buttons that really wouldn't take more than 30 minutes um okay yeah very simple and then on on youtube make sure that the link goes to this channel instead oh, to the right one yeah the, the other yep. channel is, is also a teaching channel and there are a lot of things but i don't know how to be able to move 
move them from one to the other. So that's why you, the you can't, it, you have to download and re-upload. They won't let you switch between channels. Otherwise, scammers would be doing that all the time. Uh, how do you download your video? When you're and, logged into your studio, when you go to yeah. studio.youtube.com, you'll see all of your content and you'll see all of these as, you know, it's lined up your different videos. Uh, you'll be able to click on these little ellipses right here and it will say download yeah. video. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. And then I can upload it into this if I wanted to from the other channel. Correct. Okay. Well, that's was this helpful? Very helpful. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Well, first off, thank you for helping to uh, I don't I guess enhance education. I again story, it's how I'm teaching people and aspiring business owners, entrepreneurs, marketers. So I love that you're doing it in the education realm. And um, if you, I'm going to send you this recording, if you'll send me information on how I can access your resource library, I'd love to just take a look and see what you have, because it sounds really cool and see if maybe my yeah. wife can use some of those things for my kids as well. Well, it's not very big yet because, okay. um, you know, as, as you get uh, new people in and facilitating one of the things for them to do is to develop a script and facilitate it. And, and then as they, as we uh, move along, kids will be able to develop scripts. And right now our focus is on developing a pilot study. And I'm in the process of doing a short uh, PowerPoint about what uh, GMRT is or what Reader's Theater, uh, people think Reader's Theater is and what it can be. And um, then go from there into why we feel it needs to be a part, a regular part of uh, educational curriculum, regardless of where you live, uh, to supplement it and, um, and how they can go about doing that. So I'm setting up uh, people who will take the risk to pilot and I'll start to train them in the next two months and then start the pilot in January. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, people, people who use it are amazed at how engaging um, the kids are with it. But nobody wants to take the risk to say it belongs in the schools. It belongs in our curriculum until we prove it. So I would say you're going to do your, your pilot. Uh, the other thing is you just nailed it on the head. I mean, if you can capture those testimonials especially from the facilitators that are saying, here's a story of someone that couldn't grasp this concept. We applied this framework and now all of a sudden they've, they've grasped it. If not, they're close to, you know, they're really on their way to mastering it. Those as well, that those video testimonials can be added to the YouTube channel. They can be embedded into the website so that people are seeing that this is working. It's worth investigating a little further as well. Uh, okay. Okay. Those, another thing to add, another uh, homework assignment for those you. Those testimonials sort of come out in, in between the open sessions when people say something. So it's a matter of being able to clip, clip it out. <laughs> yep. Or yeah. just, just contact them afterwards. I think best way to contact them afterwards and say, hey, could you take a minute and actually record a video, send it to me so that I can, so I can post it up to YouTube because we're trying to collect testimonials. Most people would be happy to do so if they're benefiting from it. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we did do, okay. we did do a, a video, um, which is under the GMRT that was uh, written by the facilitators and scripted, uh, scripted out. And then in, we did it as a video that's on the, on the, uh, yeah, website. Oh, um, good. Okay. What you're saying is I need to reverse the website almost, huh? And not so, reverse, but but I've got to, I, I need to know what to do right away. Yeah. Okay. So right the history, history and stuff really isn't so important as what it is that we're doing now. The history is is an important, but it's it's secondary in nature to what can the user or visitor do on the site right now. Mm -hmm.